Ever thought about where the money from frozen assets goes and could it be used to help nations in need? Let's start with a quick primer. Frozen assets. The term might sound chilly, but it's actually a hot topic in the world of international finance. These are assets, often of substantial value, that have been seized or immobilized by governments or international bodies due to legal disputes or sanctions. Now imagine if these frozen assets could be repurposed to aid countries in distress. Intriguing, isn't it? This is precisely what Josip Borrell, the European Union's foreign policy chief, has proposed. He suggests taking 90% of revenues from Russian assets frozen in Europe and transferring them to an EU-run fund. But this isn't just any fund. It's one that finances weapons for Ukraine, a nation currently grappling with conflict. What does this proposal entail and how would it work? Stay tuned to find out. So what does this proposal actually involve and what are its implications? At the heart of this proposal is a bold strategy to redirect the flow of resources. This is not just any resource, but the revenues from Russian assets that have been frozen in Europe. Josep Borrell, the European Union's foreign policy chief, is the mastermind behind this audacious plan. Here's the nitty gritty of it. 90% of the revenues from these frozen assets would be transferred to an EU-run fund. This fund wouldn't be used to finance infrastructure projects or social programs. No, its purpose would be singular and laser-focused, to finance weapons for Ukraine. This is a significant move, but why Ukraine, you may ask? The answer lies in the current geopolitical landscape. Ukraine has been at the center of a long-standing conflict with Russia. By arming Ukraine, the EU would be providing direct support in this ongoing struggle, potentially changing the balance of power. However, this proposal doesn't exist in a vacuum. It has the potential to impact not just the situation between Russia and Ukraine, but also the relationships within the EU itself. With 27 member governments, the EU is a diverse entity. Each member state has its own interests and alliances. This proposal could create divisions among them, with some states more willing to support Ukraine than others. It's also important to consider the potential response from Russia. This move could escalate tensions and lead to unforeseen consequences. It's a high-stakes game of geopolitical chess, and the EU is making a bold move. The proposal is set to be formally submitted to the EU's member governments. The stage is set for a summit of the bloc's leaders, where the fate of this proposal will be decided. The world will be watching closely as this drama unfolds. But what are the key points to remember from this proposal? Let's summarize. Now that we've delved into the details of this proposal, what are the key points to remember? Firstly, the proposal centers on the use of Russian assets frozen in Europe. 90% of the revenues from these assets would be redirected to an EU-run fund, specifically designed to finance weapons for Ukraine. This is a novel approach, using financial sanctions, not just as a punitive measure, but also as a means to support a nation under attack. The fund would be managed by the European Union, ensuring a level of oversight and control. This could potentially enhance trust and solidarity among the EU's 27 member states, while also ensuring that the funds are used effectively and responsibly. The implications of this proposal for the Russia-Ukraine situation are significant. It could provide Ukraine with much-needed resources, bolstering their defensive capabilities. This could in turn alter the power dynamics of the conflict, perhaps even deterring further aggression. For the EU member states, this proposal could represent a more proactive stance in the face of geopolitical conflicts. However, it also raises questions about the potential for escalation and the broader geopolitical repercussions. The benefits of the proposal are clear. It provides direct support to Ukraine, while also putting to good use assets that are otherwise dormant. However, the drawbacks must also be considered. There is a risk of escalating tensions and the long-term impact on relations with Russia remains uncertain. This proposal also represents a potential paradigm shift in the use of frozen assets. Rather than simply being a form of punishment, they could be used as a tool for providing direct aid to nations in need. This could set a precedent for future conflicts, potentially changing the landscape of international sanctions and financial diplomacy. In the end, this proposal could mark a significant shift in how frozen assets are used to aid nations in need. Stay tuned for more updates on this important story.